I'm going to call the meeting to order of the License Hearing and Public Safety Committee, July 27th, 2022. Um, roll call. Alderperson Barb Feldy, I'm here. Betty Ackley? Here. Alderperson Dean Decker? Here. Alderperson Joe Heideman? Here. Alderperson Amanda Salza? Here. Um, we're all in attendance. Um, could you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, allegiance if you're able? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Introduction of committee members. We'll start and we'll move around the table and finish up with the Okay, um, I'm Barbara Feldy. I am the chair of the License Hearing and Public Safety Committee and Alderperson for District 1. I'm Betty Ackley, Vice Chair of the Committee and Alderperson for District 4. Alderman Joe Heideman, uh, 10th District. Um, Anna Salazar, District 3. Dean Decker, District 6. Chuck Adams, City Attorney. Kathy Hoffman, City Attorney's Office. Kurt Semple, Patrol Captain with the Sheboygan Police Department. Eric Macchiano, Fire Chief. All right. Um, approval of community. Yeah, we're going to. I always look for Dave. No, he does, he does like the attention. <laughs> um, we're going to do approval of the minutes from July 13, 2022. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Chair votes aye. Motion carried. Items for discussion. RO number 41-22-23-7-18-22 to Chief of Police Christopher Domingowski pursuant to section 54 through 65 of the municipal code submitting the quarterly report showing the benchmark measurements for the police department for the period commencing April 1, 2022 and ending June 30th, 2022. All right, take it away. All right, see, I'm here on behalf of the chief. Um, so you have some of the highlights in front of you on the IFC here if you've had a chance to review that. Um, I think just a few things to maybe uh, call attention to. Um, one is that violent crime is up um, uh, by numbers. That in Sheboygan is primarily driven by assaults, and uh, we did some did some looking into what was driving that uh, for us this year, and it's primarily been school-related assaults. And so, um, what we've heard from our school resource officers is that as kids are back in school. Um, They've kind of forgotten some of those social skills over the last couple of years. Um, and uh, But it is in line with uh, previous years before the pandemic uh, shut schools down. So uh, that seems to be what's sort of driving that as a return to what was happening previously um, with school-related assaults. Property crimes are also up. That's primarily driven by thefts. Um, we have had a couple of groups of juveniles that are responsible for a good uh, proportion of our thefts, including thefts of vehicles. Um, I think when you compare it to other municipalities around the state, I think our really all of our crime in general, but uh, certainly property crimes are quite a bit lower and, and especially vehicle thefts, um, which other jurisdictions are experiencing really much bigger problems with that. And uh, in virtually every vehicle theft case that we've had, they could have been prevented by someone not leaving their keys in their car. So. So that's still unfortunately a driver of that as well. Or a caring community. That What's that? We are a uh, trusting, trusting community. Yeah. Well, I, I suppose not. sometimes we're the victims of our own success where people feel safe, right? And then yeah. uh, no. they tend to not engage in practices that they would if they didn't feel as safe. Um, regarding traffic crashes, so you can see as of the quarterly report, there was an increase of about 27 crashes. Um, I can tell you that as of Monday, they have equalized again. So we're exactly on pace with crashes last year. Uh, and um, another 
good thing to report from that is that our traffic stops and arrests are up uh, over previous years. And so um, I know many of you hear complaints from your constituents about traffic related issues. And uh, so we are, I think, doing more to focus on that this year than we've uh, uh, done in, in previous years as well. Um, and then the chief also mentioned about uh, involuntary commitments. So these are the chapter 51 mental health commitments um, are up as well. And so I um, wanted to point out that that's something that still occupies a considerable amount of our time and increasingly um, over previous years. So. I have a question. Yeah. Have we hired anybody for like a ride along for mental health issues or uh, to come to the scene and help handle it? So uh, the, what they call the co-responder model, where it's a police officer and a social worker or a mental health professional that respond together. Um, that project, the county has approved money for it. Um, and I think there are still discussions taking place about what the city's role in that should be and whether you all as the council want to uh, contribute to that program as well. So it's in the works. We've been um, working on it for some time. So. Yeah, that's why I asked because I know you've been talking about it. Time to stop talking and start putting your money where you Put that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I do think there's progress, though. So, the chief knows a lot more about it than I do. He's been most involved in it. So I think it's a personnel issue, trying to find personnel. That's the, issue, the big issue with it. Two, also providing the personnel for that. I mean, they, they, they don't really, they don't, they don't um, a lot of, you know, it's kind of like with everything else right now, hiring is difficult. I think that's where the county comes in, right? The social services? Yep, so they contract with a service that, that does um, the screening for mental health and voluntary commitments um, called VistaCare. And I think they feel like they probably have the staff that would, or they would be able to bring the staff in through that. Okay. I think that's what their plan is, um, is to use this to care for them. And they do have some staff there kind of around the clock as it is. So. Okay. Right. Any other questions? Sure. Sure. I have one. Uh, I, I guess what was alarming to me was the increase of the violence in the schools. Okay. If you took Sheboygan, okay, uh, are, are, can we pinpoint what schools they are? Do, do we know uh, where the where our resources should be addressed? Um, I think that they probably are. I mean, I think we are addressing it. So um, primarily it's the high schools where we've had assaults and it's both high school, all three high schools really. Um, and uh, we have um, school resource officers in both of those schools. And um, there's security guards down at uh, A2 downtown and at, at the schools as well for this the school from the school district, um, and I don't I don't know that it's um, again I think it's in line with what was going on before the pandemic um, and even with some of the just the change in behavior that um, the schools and the teachers and the counselors and our school resource officers have been dealing with where kids have forgotten how to be social creatures. Um, yeah. Okay, so in, in comparison, if you took Sheboygan, Appleton, Green Bay, are they all the same? Are all the school districts other than, I mean, is Sheboygan standing out as one of them that's the highest? I don't think so, no. No, I, I don't have numbers from those agencies, but I, I I would be shocked if we weren't doing better then. Okay, and my other question would be, now the school board gets this information too, right? Do they have, do they have a, a plan of attack or do they have something that they're going to improvise so that our students are safer um, or does that not happen so i i know that there have been discussions with um, our department the school district health and human services with their juvenile justice uh, um, social workers and the district attorney's office about how to respond to and how to make sure that there's accountability um, for kids who are you know causing problems and, and this goes both in the schools and um, like with some of the property crimes that I was talking about, that you know, kids are out uh, committing crimes and stealing vehicles and things like that. So um, I, I would say that there's, um, I, I think that we're pretty coordinated with the school district as far as um, our response. Um, I think that there are um, maybe different approaches from um, Health and Human Services at times about um, some of the resources that they can offer. Um, but uh, I think that. You know, we 
we communicate pretty well with all of them as far as how to re, how to respond and really which which kids are are the ones that really are in most need of intervention. Okay, so then after looking at these numbers at the end of the school year, going into the next school year, they already have things in place that are going to try to address those issues and make that make those schools safer. Um, I don't know. I'm in a position to answer that question for you. Um, so the. The schools are in our criminal investigation division, the school resource officers, that's not my division. Uh, and so what discussions they've had as far as plans for the fall, um, I don't know. I know that truancy was an issue that they were um, working to address and making sure that, that there was a procedure that everyone was following um, for that. But if, if you want, I can certainly have either the chief or uh, Jim Vieser get back to you with. Oh, I appreciate it, thanks. Sure. Okay. Any other questions? All right, we're gonna move on to, oh, I think, oh, that was um, information only. No, 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 no it's a, oh, oh, we have to accept it, don't we? we? Okay, I need a motion to file it. So moved. Second. Any discussion now? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Chair votes aye. Motion passed. Number seven, RO number 3922-23-718-22 by Fire Chief pursuant to section 50564 of the Municipal Code submitting the quarterly report benchmark measurement for the fire department for the period commencing April 1, 2022 and ending June 30th, 2022. Okay, thank you, Chair. So uh, you, you all have the information and the IFC. Uh, just a couple of highlights. Um, our year-to-date call volume is uh, 603 incidents higher than it was last year, 2021, which wow. is a 21% increase. So that's quite a bit. Um, couldn't tell you exactly why. Probably because we're back to life and everybody's doing the stuff they would have been doing in 21. But um, our rescue or EMS calls have increased, excuse me, by 16%. And I think that's a trend that we'll continue to see moving forward in the future. It's just uh, the way of the world now, uh, which is going to be, an, and it'll, it'll have an impact on our services sooner than later. Um, so down the road, we'll be having discussions on that. Uh, you all look nice today. Don't forget, um, fire inspections have uh, also increased. Uh, we're back to getting uh, out in the road with COVID uh, winding down. So that's great news. Uh, obviously that's our uh, fire pre prevention. It's our bread and butter. So we wanna make sure we're safe. Uh, well, the one thing you will notice that's down is our training hours for EMS. Um, and I'll give you a, a presentation after for about a uh, two minute presentation here on our live burn. So that really took a lot of our time uh, and we knew that. So we had to make some adjustments in our schedule, but we appreciate everybody's support. So we will be back back on track, getting our EMS training hours back up here uh, over the next couple quarters. And uh, due to the higher call volume and the increase in calls uh, for our staff, it's been tough meeting that benchmark of 90% efficiency with our, our response time. And it's just because we're having multiple calls coming in all the time. So crews are responding from a previous call, which is might be further away than where the station would normally, you know, is located if they were in quarters. Uh, that's just going to continue to happen until we can uh, kind of iron things out and, and slow down with the call volume. But I'll be glad to answer any other questions. Otherwise, that's my report. That's a pretty big percentage of it. It is a huge, huge increase. And in. luckily, the guys aren't complaining just yet. <laughs> How are you finding it's working with the new memorial? Um, I know you're taking them there now. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, it, it increases our transport time, but really, it's insignificant. We're It's just next door. So we're still able to respond uh, as normal. But yeah, it, it's a nice hospital, so uh, we'll see how things go. It's still new, so getting some kinks out. Haven't been there yet. Knock on Knock wood. On wood. <laughs> That's right. We talked about this last time, Barb. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to stay away from those places. <laughs> All right, any questions? 
All right, I need a motion. Accept and file would be the motion. Thank you. I move to accept and file. Yes, sir. Second. Is there any other discussion on it? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Chair votes aye. Passes. All right, number eight, presentation to the committee regarding live burn-in training, presentation only. Yep, so thank you, Chair. And uh, so I, I, I asked Carly to just put a, a quick PowerPoint together just uh, so you guys can see what uh, one of the main reasons. Kathy, if you don't mind, do you know how to do that? Do I just click to the next one? Or? No, you can click on here. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Rach. It's on this side, hard to see. Oh, yeah, outside. There you go. Okay, so uh, we had a house on the south side. Uh, don't ask me the address, but it was near Stahl, where the uh, just south of the industrial park or the business park that we have. So um, I just wanted to give you a quick little tip because people don't know what we do at a live burn. So you'll see here uh, we have to obviously be safe. So we uh, surround the burn rooms with plywood uh, and drywall when it's appropriate. We seal all the openings and holes. Uh, this uh, window here you'll see has plywood over and then it's actually this window where we could open it up and ventilate or use it if we were burning in another area to ventilate, simulating firefighters busting windows and doors. But that's how we do it. Um, something I didn't know, this is called Excelsior. I'm not a farm guy, I'm a city guy. I didn't even know what Excelsior was, but a statement, but apparently it's something that burns very well and quickly. So. Um, the guys are here, we obviously in a burn like this, because there's live fire, you want to be safe. So before every scenario, and, and we would do four, five, six scenarios each burn day, because uh, each shift would work. Um, so you want to, before every single scenario, because we're changing them, you want to have a little powwow, make sure everybody's safe, and then you debrief afterwards. So this is one of the debriefs. Uh, seeing how the burns went, how the scenario went, and then the guys talk about it and see if there's things we need to improve. These uh, pictures here are, um, so this is, we have ventilation. Um, so this crew would be simulating uh, going to the roof or breaking a window, popping, you know, to try to get the smoke out. But when we do ventilation, we do a coordinated kind of effort where you would send in your attack crew, which is this middle slide, with the hose line, and then while they try to find the room, the fire uh, room, the crews are ventilating when requested. If you ventilate too early, you could spread the fire and burn the crews going in, and that's where you lose and hurt a lot of firefighters throughout this country. And then this, that one room I showed you, this is when, you know, this is kind of at the beginning when the fire's first starting, but it, and then you'll smoke up the, it looks great, but then in a couple seconds, you wouldn't be able to see anything because of the smoke. Um, this is just showing you uh, what tools they use to tick. They're going in with the hose line and then they bust the door in. That's what we would do at an actual scene. Um, just here's some action photos of the smoke. Tick stands for thermal imaging camera. Yeah, thermal imaging camera. Sorry. Yeah, good, good call. Um, and uh, yeah, so the, this is one of our, our crew members who lit the fire. Uh, he actually has a hose line in here to control the fire so it doesn't get out of out of hand, out of control, and allowing the crews to come in and search. And then this is just what it looks like. You can see the smoke layer here. Uh, this guy's advancing the hose. Uh, we also had a mannequin in there to simulate a victim, so they would have to find the victim and uh, bring the victim out. Um, and then here, uh, this is uh, what we refer to as a backup line. So in one scenario, you might have the crews going in on the front with the hose line. This backup crew might be coming in. You can see the two hoses here. This is that backup line. Um, and then we also practice incident command. So uh, we rotated our crews in there to simulate like they were the incident commander and learning what it was like and what things they needed to do to not only put the fire out, but keep the crew safe and get help when you needed it. Uh, this is just simulating um, a uh, ventilation crew on the roof and quite the handsome fella in the jacket there. <laughs> uh, so uh, then this is just some action photos. 
Are you with me, Dave? All right. Uh, just some action photos of the, of the house. Um, I, you would be amazed at how much heat this. Uh, I wish I would have taken a picture of where our cars were, but we had to move our vehicles back because it got so darn hot and we were already back far enough. It just is amazing. So this just was just a little action video. And even where this distance is, you're burning. You have to be careful. We're in our gear. So. Really, that's it. And then. I just wanted to say thank you for all your support. You guys have been very great for us. So I really appreciate it. Uh, so glad to answer any questions if you have them. So the Ben thing is that more for vision, so that it, so that it clears the smoke, so you can see the fire better, or is that the main reason? It, uh, yes, and then also it also clears the heat out. So um, even though we're in our gear, mm -hmm. if we were not to ventilate that, we a we're we're going to start overheating ourselves. You wouldn't be able to see where the fire is. You truly cannot see your hand in front of your face. Okay. Uh, I know in movies and like this picture sure. here, you can see the smoke in the background. That's because it's upstairs. It's deceiving. If as soon as he hits the top stair, you can't see anything. It's just so you have to ventilate to get that out. But if you ventilate prematurely, you're going to spread the fire and it will burn firefighters okay. and any victims that may or may not be in there. So the key is to kind of what we call a coordinated attack. You want to mm -hmm. ventilate when that hose line is in there so they there can keep know. the fire in check, get the smoke out, and now save the property contents or victims. When did you do that, Ben? Uh, we did three different evolutions in May, at the end of May, and then we burned that house. So those two live video streams were us burning that house. That was the first week in June. Uh, we had Town of Wilson uh, assisting us and training with us, Town of Sheboygan and Kohler, which was great. Uh, because again, with the more we work with the county at a fire like this, we can't we can't do it ourselves. We just don't, it's labor intensive. So the more they train with us, the better it is for all of us. Yeah. So, but thank you. Years ago, uh, when my mom moved out of the house, we lived out in, uh, out in Sheboygan Falls. Falls Fire Department or the town of Falls came and said, we'd like to do some control burns in the house. And we said, well, sure, go ahead, not a big deal. And, you know, they, they, they said, we're gonna do this one. And if you have any family members that wanna watch, that's that's fantastic. So I went out there, and uh, my brother was there. And it went from a, a control burn for a certain area, and then the whole house went up. So <laughs> they had to get a hold of the other because otherwise they weren't going to get to see the house. It, it was like it, they got into an interior walls, and they said, however, that house was built, there was no stopping it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, and th these guys from the town of Falls are all going, whoa! It went from you know a, a training ex exercise that well that we'll just watch the house burn down we were uh, we were pretty fortunate that all the evolutions we did we did there was one close one yeah. uh but a, we were able that's to get exactly, it yeah. exactly, that's what can happen it can happen in, 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 easily yeah. so. well, that excelsior stuff i, like, I recall that, that there was a fire about 40 years ago because we have the business american excelsior yeah. and had a business alongside the railroad tracks and some young kids found a railroad flare and, and tossed it in there and that's oh and that, yeah, that stuff goes up and that place went up just like that too yeah it was, it was i remember that fire it was we didn't have kids that did that back then <laughs> <No>. <laughs> they probably went to the same school where the incidents are happening yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, that was information only. Is there any questions? Any, uh, any other comments? No? All right, thanks, Steve. Thank you. All right, number nine, RO number 42-22-23-718-22 by City Clerk submitting various license applications. It's actually only one application on this RO. We're recommending holding it for further investigation and discussion with the applicant. They would be have it issued to them yet anyway, so um, it's fast taco, and uh, there are some issues about what their premises are going to be because they also have a drive-through, and and uh, at least in the past, this committee has been concerned about drive-through alcohol, as is the police department. So, 
I remember talking about it. I was just going to say, didn't we talk about fast? I think we before? probably have a solution, we but we're going to call them in. All right. Um, then I need a motion to hold until they figure out what, what should be done. So moved. Second. Is there any other questions or comments? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Number 10, RO number 42, no, 43, 22, 23, 718, 22 by city clerk submitting a license application. This is the application for La Cocina de Familia and we're recommending that it be granted. All right. Any questions for attorney? No? All right. I need a motion. I move to grant the license. Second. Comments? Anything? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Your votes aye. Motion carries. Um, next meeting date will be August 10th, 2022. We'll not be here. Okay, mark that on your calendar. A motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 I didn't think anybody would be opposed. <laughs>